very nice. It's just like a, a, a nice fade into non-existence. It's nothing, it's nothing terrible. So, yeah, I know, I took the face part off because I was, I could not see, maybe I'll put it back on for the actual casting of the game itself for at least a short period of time, but it pulls out a lot of my hair with the zipper going up and down, so I'm leaving the face mask off so I can actually see what's happening. Ladies and gentlemen, it's game number one between uh, the side of Team Warband taking on Team Robloxians, and we are getting right on in. We got some new people, God Sai, welcome. We got a bunch of familiar faces with Juan, Zeno, Caboose, Coming out, Arcane Vixen, Hero, Futuristic Kree, becoming a very big regular on the channel. Thank you for continuously coming out. Dragon AX. It's like AA ROM, but AX. 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 Do you guys use Axe Body Spray? Because if you do, you are a Chad and you should reconsider your life options. Uh, Vixen, Ebbs, the most awesome person. You guys should definitely check her out. Ebon CL. Follow her channel. She is a very awesome streamer, even though I have actually not been on her channel myself until tonight when I followed. And I was like, oh my gosh, what am I doing this? So I can tell you, though, just from her hanging out on my channel, she's a super awesome, cool person. Go and check her out. Also, Doc Shocker, what a supporter of the channel. Always here, Jay Chillin. So there we go. Nidalee and the Zyra band away. This is the for fun night of the night. Usually we got our Tuesdays and our Thursdays. Tuesdays are the bit more serious. Thursdays are a bit more for fun. That's why I was kind of doing the morph suit thing. But, but, uh, or so because of that, I'm expecting the possibility of at least at one point tonight, there to be five bands trying to spell something out. We'll see if that comes down. We'll see if that happens. If it doesn't, it's not a big deal. Rexai obviously incredibly strong. Uh, Nidalee, <laughs> somebody saw the games on Tuesday. Somebody saw the games on Tuesday. Just that's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Uh, Zed, Ari, and Irelia banned away from the side of Team Robloxians. I don't think those are particular bands. They're just strong champions. Maybe the Ari taken away from Arcane Vixen. The Irelia taken away from, I don't know, uh, Juan or someone, but not nothing too too crazy. As Nico, ooh, the chameleon, he's locked in. Nico gonna kill you. Sorry, that, that's not exactly how Nico talks. Nico, very curious. There we go. That's a little bit closer. <clears throat> Nico, find you. Nico, copy everything. There we go. That's a bit more on target. Akali, locked in for the side of Team Robloxians. Dragon Axe looking to pick up someone for the top lane, it appears, as he was rolling over the Shen. Now the cannon. What's it going to be? Is he going to go for the tank or the carry? It's Gragas. Ooh, that might be in the jungle. We'll have to find out. Akali could go mint. She could go top. A little bit of a flex picker there. Options. Calm Poison. Sup, sup. How you doing? Uh, also, I have to say, here's a quick note, side note. If, one of, if any of you have seen Endgame... Uh, obviously don't say anything in chat because I will ban you for all existence. You actually, if you say something in chat to spoil Endgame, I will Thanos snap you out of existence. But, I am glad I'm not a huge streamer. And the reason why is because on some bigger streamers, I've actually seen people trying to spoil Endgame stuff. And that's terrible. And that's awful. And as, like, the, the host of the channel, I pretty much see everything that gets posted on the Twitch chat. And so, I, one of those times that I'm glad that I'm not, you know, crazy big streamer that's going to have, you know, people trying to spoil Endgame. I did hear that Batman dies in Endgame. It's pretty sad. But, you know, that's the only spoiler that I've heard so far. So, I'm just going to say that uh, I'm glad that nothing else has been spoiled from that movie. So, hey, Ultimate Hackster. I've heard that. I also heard that uh, there was a YouTube video done trying to, or that was talking about that, I believe. He said that it wouldn't work, but I'm not I'm not so positive. So, you saw every spoiler the day the movie came out. <gasps> Foul Jester, that's so sad. That's a big rip. That's a big rip. You're seeing it Sunday? I'm supposed to see it Saturday. I'm supposed to see it Saturday. So if any of you guys are watching this video on YouTube way later, the we have Endgame is just out. It's only been out for about a week now. I'm supposed to be seeing it in about two days' time. Excited to watch it. Uh, it's gonna be good. Even if it does, even if something happens to get spoiled between now and then, it's not a big deal. I'm not gonna cry about it. I'm still gonna enjoy the movie. But the one thing with the spoilers that I don't like is that if a spoiler shows up, 
there's a pretty good chance that during the movie itself, you're constantly waiting for the thing that was spoiled to show up, and so you're spending more energy going, is this when that spoiled thing happens? Is this when that spoiled thing happens? What happens now? Does it get spoiled now? And you never quite get the opportunity to just sit and enjoy the movie. So that's the, my main hate on spoilers as a whole. If you guys like spoilers, that's fine. That's fine. So <gasps> Thanos is in the movie. <gasps> what? <laughs> Whoa! Chad, you're banned for life. That's it. Get him out of here. We're banning him. He's gone. He's out forever. We're going to time him out for all eternity. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Did I actually time you out? No, I didn't time you out. Okay, I thought I timed you out for a second, but no, 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 no. We're just having fun, so just watch it on Showbox on your phone. What? What? Hey, Cop Boys is going to watch it tomorrow. That's awesome. That's awesome. I hope it's an awesome one, and that you let us know whether you enjoyed it or not. No spoilers, just let us know whether you enjoyed it or not. So Thor licks his hammer. Oh, my. Oh, oh. Okay, we got ourselves Thresh, Riven, Evelyn, Vane locked in for the side of Warband. They have completed their compositions. Rolling over to the side of Robloxians. They grab themselves the Soraka Blitz. And now they're going to be grabbing a Draven. Okay, this is going to get spicy because that is a Blitzcrank in the top lane. Gragas in the jungle. Akali mid. Draven's being traded out for Kai'Sa's bottom lane. The better vein Zeno is going to be playing versus the Kai'Sa. Oh, this is going to get good. As Xenodax subs with Twitch Prime for four months. They're on a two-month streak. Yeet, yeet, my geet. That is exactly right. You got yourself access to a whole bunch of awesome, awesome emotes now. And I just... Okay, so here's the thing. For Tier 3... I decided that I didn't have any super cool emotes that I could do right now. And I was like, you know, let me just fill this slot with something for now just to get through, right? Okay. So I submitted the Excellency logo as my tier three um, emote slot. That way, when I go into other leagues channels and they're spamming out their stuff, I can spam out the Excellency. <gasps> what happened? Ah! Okay. Okay. All right. Hold on. Hold up! Hold! Oh, wait, no, that's the wrong thing. Hold up! See, now I'm all frazzled. You guys got me all frazzled. Ah! Hold up. They left the lobby, so I wasn't sure if they had poofed at some point during picks and bans. Something happened. Oh! <laughs> Vixen! Thank you, Vixen! Something happened! Woo! Yeah, something certainly happened. Um, Let's just hold on a second and keep picks and bands just try to remember them if someone on the channel wants to try to go back and clip what we just have for the picks and bands that'd be awesome um we can use that as a reference for our picks and bands the question is whether futuristic kree is going to be coming back and con poison yes excellency xeno is a drf xeno he just changed his name so soul has picks easy clap there we go Excellent stuff. Excellent stuff. So, okay, who is Juan, Cody, or Roy? Roy is Juan. Cody is Caboose. It's actually pretty easy if you remember that Caboose, the C, is uh, Cody. It's um, not that hard to remember. And then if Caboose is Cody, then it's not that hard to remember that Juan is Roy. So, yeah, there we go. All right, so we're waiting to see a futuristic Cray Cree comes back now i want to check in real quick with what is their twitch name if they're not online on twitch we might pull in foul jester we don't want to delay the game too long don't want to go on for forever ethan is orange ethan ethan are you still here ethan ethan colin ethan ethan to uh ethan to aisle five ethan ethan to aisle five please thank you ladies and gentlemen <sighs> Arkham Vixen got that snapshot. That is awesome. Check that out. All right, we got ourselves in the Discord. Also, what is going on in the background? Calm your tie. I'm going to assume that that says tie, um, not something else. So, <laughs> actually, uh, both of those memes are just ever so slightly cut out by the league. I love it. PG. PG content on Discord, just barely, just barely. Also, everyone's changing their profile to the cat, and I'm, I, I dig it. I'm a big fan of that, so. 
All right, we're gonna give we're gonna give Ethan just another moment, just another moment. If he don't get on in just another second, because if he might, if he had like his computer restart or something like that, it wouldn't be too hard to get him back in. But he gonna be gone for forever. We might just get him to game two. What do you guys say, Foul Jester? Are you available? Are you available? That says Beyonce. Oh, calm down, Beyonce. B. I suppose that could be a B E. I O N C. Yeah, okay, it sounds like Beyonce. That looks like Beyonce. I thought that might have said something else. I'm not going to say what it says, but it could be saying something. Could be saying something else. So, hey, Jason, 13 Noobs. Jason, how you doing? How you doing? We are live. We are live every Tuesday and Thursday night. Looking like we're not going to be getting uh, someone, Futurist Decree, back in here. So we're going to go ahead and invite Foul Jester. Unless he went and started playing his own game. <gasps> Foul Jester, would you leave us like that? Would you leave us like that? Would you make us cry? Would you break our souls? I'm doing the little heart thing over my, my heart, but you guys can't even see the heart hand symbols. So it does not you can confirm i don't know if i wanted that confirmed or not okay now this is a little bit Uh, do we want to trade Foul over or no? Blue side. Do... Do you want Foul or... You good. Because again, we like to keep things a bit balanced. Having double diamonds on the side of Robloxians. Sorry, excuse me. Sorry. Purple team. Purple team. Um... Having Godsai and Foul Jester both on the side of Roblox scene seems a little bit um, unfair. But you know what? They're good. They're good. They're My good. All right. Up. Let's roll with it. Let's roll with it. Caboose. Cody. Start us up. Josh Conda forever. That team, was already, that team was already used. Zeno. It's already on the YouTubes. Hey. JPT. 011. Thanks so much for becoming a minion, helping us push the mid lane. We are going to knock down that tower one day. So, same logo stuff. Same logo stuff. I'm not sure what you're responding to, Nova. But, all right. So, this is not... This is not, this is not, ladies and gentlemen. This is not the same picks and bands. You can pick and ban different things if you want to pick and ban different things. Because we got a new player coming in, Foul Jester, that means that the picks and bands can be different. My music's overlapping. Terrible NA production. And a production. There we go. All right. So with the new picks and bans, that's why we're going to see the Renekton coming out, which doesn't make any sense considering nobody picked or banned it last game. It's just out of left field. They're like, you know what? Uh, we're just going to go through and randomly select. Um, you, no, but you know what? Uh, Renekton only top lane is a bit OP. Uh, so we're gonna, just going to go ban away that Renekton. Um, they also were considering picking the Draven last game. Now they've banned it for the side of Robloxians. You know what? Keep it thing spicy. That's for sure. There's that Shaco band against Foul Jester we've all come to know and expect. If you give Foul Jester his Shaco, he will make you regret it. Uh, unless you're Batman, then obviously he can take down uh, scary clown people any day of the week. Rek'Sai, band away, super strong in the jungle. Plus, I think Godsai was making a mention of uh, playing that. And so to go ahead and take in that beautiful lady. I mean, I, all I can think about is Rek'Sai in a skirt, you know, or a nice dress. Um, this is actually a good question. Uh, did somebody, I'm sure somebody's drawn fan art of Rek'Sai. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Okay, I might get Twitch, um, Twitch uh, in trouble for this, but we're going to check this out real quick. Hold on, let's go over to our, our uh, recording scene real quick. Oh, wait, I got, I got no music. We'll get back to Picks and Bands here in just a second, but check this out. Check this out. Oh, that is beautiful. That is just beautiful. Look at the lady! She's so pretty with a pretty little hat and her umbrella. It's my little Rek'Sai. My little Rek'Sai, my little Rek'Sai. Oh, wait, that's a different different one. Oh, it's a queen. Rek'Sai queen. So pretty. Empsai. <laughs> uh, this is awesome. Credit to whoever these artists are. 
This is not me. I did not make any of this art. This is my disclaimer. I didn't do any of this stuff. Okay, we're not going to scroll too far. Otherwise, we're going to get in trouble. But that is that is just adorable right there. That is just adorable. All I wanted to see was Rek'Sai in a beautiful dress and skirt. Okay, uh, back to the game. <clears throat> we're serious here. This is uh, Excellency Shoutcasting. We take these games incredibly serious. Uh, you know, we want to make sure that everyone feels like true LCS professionalism going on here. Going on right now. Thank you, Crazy Roy. Nice gloves is what he says. Uh, we got ourselves the Vigar, the Morgana, the Irelia locked in for the side of Team Warband. They have brought the CC Train Pain. Pain Train, that's what I'm trying to say. They, The Vigar Event Horizon, Morgana Dark Binding, Irelia Stuns. I mean, pretty simple stuff. Flawless Duet is the spell name. LeBlanc, Blitzcrank, and Zyra coming out for the side of Robloxians. They're looking for that Blitzcrank at the top lane once again. Doc Shocker, I'm a big fan. And excited to see that come through. LeBlanc looks like for the mid lane. Zyra for the bottom lane supportive role. And it was banned last game. She gets to play it this game. That makes me excited. When somebody gets to pick up their main, everything goes pretty crazy. We got the Kaisa banned away. Are we going to see the Vayne banned from the side of Robloxians as Xeno had picked that up previously? No, they're going to ban away the Jin instead. So expect that it's going to be a Vayne pick by the side of Team Warband, and we'll have to see how Robloxians decide to respond in turn. What are they going to pick on their side? One, Foul Jester as well. We're still looking for a jungler for the side of Team Robloxians, and oh, well now the truth comes out. Team Robloxians, they said, you know what, Zeno, you guys banned away the Kaisa and the Lucian. We're gonna grab the Vayne ourselves and counterpick that. Which means it's now up to Xena what he wants to grab. I'm thinking the Sivir. This is what he's played before. Oh, hold on. Hold on. He's going way the other direction. It's a Vel'Koz. It's a Vel'Koz. So that's Vel'Koz Morgana bottom lane as Juan grabs the Kha'Zix. Now this is truly a team composition for the ages. I don't even know where to begin. We're going to wait for the pick from Foul Jester, then roll through the players, and then do a little bit of analyzation on the compositions. Don't forget, if you're hanging out in the chat, guys, you get to also be included when it comes to the um, betting on which team you think is going to win. As Foul Jester will lock in the Zack. Not often seen Mr. Flubber himself, Jelly Man, Jelly Toes, looking at slapping some people around. All right, with that stretching strike, good stuff, good stuff. Let's roll through the players and their champions, and then jump right in. Full purple team. Oh, oh boy, they are going purple all the way. They have full purple icons. Now they got full purple champions. I love it. Look at those profile pictures of purple. We got some true alliteration going on right now for the side of Team War Band or Off Meta Purple. It's gonna be Arcane Vixen taking the purple. Vigar in the mid lane. Caboose with a purple Morgana. Bottling support of Roll Hero with a purple Irelia in the top lane. Zeno with the Vel'Koz. Purple, of course, and definitely not last. Purple Kha'Zix played by Juan in the jungle. For the side of Team Robloxians, we've got ourselves Dragon Axe with a LeBlanc in the mid lane. Purple there. Doc Shocker with the yellow Blitzcrank in the top lane. Vixen Ebbs with the Zyra red support in the bottom lane. God Sai with purple vein in the AD carry roll and foul just rounding it out with green Zack on the jungle or in the jungle should I say I didn't want to leave the team Robloxians even though they're playing some random colored champions out of the loop when it came to it you know you think that the team purple's pretty cool we're gonna go ahead and name all those colors from the side of Robloxians as well so that said, we're going to get to analyzing this compositions in just one second. I got to grab myself a quick snip and check out these. Whoop, that's not what I wanted to do. There we go. Uh, I do post these uh, compositions on to Twitter. And that way, anyone who's following me on Twitter can get notified of what's going on and uh, can follow along with the two teams. Warband and Robloxians. Oop. And I may, because normally my duo caster would be analyzing the team compositions, I may actually run out of time here in just a second. <gasps> Game one. With all purple on the blue side. Ironic, I know.
This is why it's good to have a dual caster. Ha 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 ha. It's all right. It is all right. All good. There we go. Boom. Done. Now we can focus <gasps> into the game itself. Let's throw out that bet and see what you guys think. Betting has started and opened up. I'm going to run through the compositions here. Let's talk about it. All right. For the Vigar, going to be good CC. Mid lane, great late game scaling. We're gonna. Dark Binding is going to be nice. The burst out of the Vel cause, as well as team fighting potential for my Aurelia. Kha'Zix assassination. Pretty good composition. However, they don't have much sustain because most of them are spell casters. They kind of are either burst champions. It's kind of a, a you know, Vigar drops his combo on somebody and then gets out. Morgana looks to root somebody, let the Velkaz destroy them, and then get out. So their overall scaling of a team fight, the length of the team fight, is not good for Team Warband. For the side of Robloxians, you've got LeBlanc, an assassin, Blitzcrank, a bit of a tank, Zyrus, very squishy but great CC, Vayne, she wants to be playing the extended team fights. You got to get those multiple auto attacks in, get that Silver Bolts prop. That's what counts. And if you are Vayne, you want the game or the fight to delay, delay, delay to go as long as possible so you can get as many of those auto attacks in. Zach, great engage pretty good tank however the problem with his engage is that he can be hit by cc and if he's hit by cc it's very easy to take him down so for the side of team robloxians overall they're looking for more skirmish fights they're not necessarily looking to do a super 5v5 until it's kind of the later stages of mid game you don't want to go super late because it's going to be a vigar that you're dealing with and you don't want to deal with the vigar so instead of dealing with the vigar you want to fight kind of towards that mid game when veins on a two maybe even three item power spike when leblanc can pop the vigar before he can get his ultimate out and zach can find the right engage for the team so, we'll see which team eventually comes out with the victory. For the side of Warband, they're looking for picks heavily. They're also looking for... Um, they could scale super late. They've got a Velkaz, they've got a Vigar. They could scale super late, but really, they would prefer to snowball the early game super hard. Get Kha'Zix stupidly fed. Get a bunch of damage onto this Morgana. Uh, or sorry, from Morgana. Um, onto the Velkaz and Irelia. Let her get her Trinity Force super early on. And then you should be able to find yourself victory just through snowballing, having better pressure, and having a massive amount of CC. All right, betting has opened. We got a couple people. Nova betting 400 on blue. There we go. He did it correctly. 400 on blue. That's pretty, pretty spicy of you for sure. And we'll see how that goes. There we go. Switching over. How dare you? Immediately said in chat. Are we going to get an invade? That's a question right now. Let me know in the chat if you guys think there's going to be an invade. Also, if you've got that ability, drop them hype emotes. I'm going to actually go ahead and put my bet on... Uh, you know what? Just because of the color scheme, it's a fun Thursday night. I'm going to bet blue side as well, but I'm not going to put 400. I'll put... I'll put a nice, solid uh, 93 on blue side. How about that? There we go. Uh, a bunch of spamming masteries hanging out here in the mid lane, showing off. Is this toxic or not? Doesn't matter. It's really loud in your ears. Also, Zeno, uh, yeah, Zeno, that was a little sad. Yeah, that, that's not exactly Mastery 7. Good, good try, though. Good try. We support, you know, we support your, your, your hopes and dreams. There we go. Go red. Hey, 13 noobs, Jason. If you want to bet, you can feel free to bet, too. You can drop in that bet. Uh, it is points. You do exclamation point points to check in on how many points you've got. I got 415 XP myself. The longer you stick around to the channel, the more XP you get. But you can also use that XP to bet and see how much XP you actually have. So check in with that. 33 points, Nova. Oh, man. Yeah, 13 noobs. Jason, you can feel free to jump in as well with uh, betting if you want. If you got some XP as well. There you go. Yeah, oh, 7 XP. Uh, actually, I think that might be 3 XP short of the minimum to, to bet. So, Also, I think, Nova, you had more uh, than you... I think that you went down to 33 because of what you bet. So, either way, we're into game. We're going to watch where these junglers go. Kha'Zix at the moment at his blue buff. He's going from buff to buff immediately. We've got to move these champions in the right positions really quickly, making sure that we can 
follow along with where they go. This Blitzcrank in the top lane is going to be something extra spicy to watch. Doc Shocker's got himself that corrupting potion to start the game off with, knowing that he might take a little bit of harassment with that flawless duet. Now, the thing to remember is he's going to have a mana shield, that as long as he plays around that mana shield, he can actually take a bit of a beating up on that top side. There he goes, getting a little bit of a knock up onto Hero. I'd love to see him pick up an early sheen. Ooh, that's a bit of extra damage as well. Is he going the AD route, or is the Blitzcrank going the AP route? That's a really good question. I'm not sure about that. All good. I just need to level up. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That is exactly right. Ooh, nice another knockup. But Kha'Zix is here, and he's got the double buffs. Aurelia going in. Does she have the cooldowns for the, another flawless duet? I think he's going to get out. So Doc Shocker just rolls his way back to the turret. Kabu stepping forward, getting a couple auto attacks down to Arcade Vixen, but they might have caught cool God Sai out. He's been rooted up. He uses the heal. The flash from Regatta. They're looking for the first kill. The Ignite comes down as well. And ladies and gentlemen, first blood to Xeno on the Velkaz in the bottom lane as God Sai just gets mispositioned. Great movement by Morgana, forcing the vein to the top side. Blitzcrank Hood's going to miss. Nice jump from the Rek'Sai. However, He's going to have to wait on the cooldown to come back up. Ooh, Event Horizon is going to catch two as well as the Scuttle Crab. Are they going to actually let the, the um, sorry, Zack take away the Scuttle Crab? Looks like it will be secured. The Foul Jester will be able to get that. Bottom Scuttle Crab is still up and available, but it was that top one they decided to fight over. Both top laners coming down to help out. With that, Scuttle Crab won by Robloxian. Small advantage for them, but nothing to make up for that first blood in the bottom lane. Hey, it's Lin Vale. How are you doing? Welcome. Thank you for jumping in. Jumping in. There's the Falls 2 on the top side. Getting a little bit of sun on Doc Shocker. Quick thing to note. Uh, if you guys... Can you guys hear the actual in-game audio fairly well? I think I turned it down. Uh, on Even on Tuesday, I felt like it was super quiet. If I need to turn the in-game audio up a little bit, I will. Just because it feels super quiet. Ooh, nice Dark Binding onto the vein in the bottom lane. Godside going to be in trouble running away. However, with no heal... Things are getting really tense in this bottom lane. Good choice by the side of Xeno and Caboose to not drive this one too far forward. They say they don't need to go really far forward. They just need to keep harassing Arcane Vix or, sorry, Vixen, Ebbs, and God Sai out from this bottom lane. The more you harass, the more you can get that farm. Zach coming into the bottom lane, but he was seen by a ward. So he's going to be they have to back away. Doing okay, playing some games before I go get a new monitor tomorrow. <gasps> are you upgrading in size or just getting a higher quality? It's always nice to upgrade. Not really loud. More in-game volume would be nice. Thank you, noobs. That's exactly what I wanted. I was pretty sure that I had dropped it down. We're going to bump it up to, I think, 26 is what I normally have it at. Whoa, hold on. This might be a little bit too much. Let me know if the in-game audio is a bit too much. The flash comes out from God's side. But who I will follow. Get the execution. Now that's two kills for blue side. Vixen Ebbs able to walk away for now. A bit more damage coming through. Not going to be enough to take out the vein or the Zyra. She is already has burned Flash. However, immediately recalling Velkaz, seeing if he can stick around. Actually, forced to Flash away. <laughs> Zach doing a little bit of a dance, saying, "Ha ha, I got your Flash." I think Xena was stepping forward, seeing if he could maybe snipe the Zyra down with a long range Q. Didn't quite find it, though, and Zach played in defense really, really nicely. Foul Jester doing a good job. Oh, Arcane Vixen bursted down in that mid lane, and LeBlanc distortions out of the turret shot as well, despite being hit by the event Horizon. So good move from Dragon Axe to pick up that kill. And, ooh, hold on, hold on, Foul Jester flashes forward. He's going to get a kill. However, he's immediately turned into four Blablets. We'll see if those escape, as no, the tower does shoot them down one at a time. And so that kill will go over to the Velkaz. Xena picking it up. So just a one-for-one -one trade underneath that turret. On the top side, Blitzcrank, bit out of position. Doesn't have that ultimate for those silences yet. So he's going to go down. Immediately TPing back to that top side. Really wants to hit that level 6. He's also down a bunch of CS as well against this Irelia. And that's not very good. She should be able to get her uh, Trinity Force pretty quickly. With all of that control on that top side and getting her own solo kill up there. Something else to note is the Blitzcrank decided to actually start the Glacial Shroud rather than a Sheen. So not looking for damage, looking for tank at the moment. At least some tank stats. In the bottom lane, the push coming through from Robloxians. Their farm is actually about a little bit over 10 farm over Warband's Xeno in this bottom lane. So... Velkaz struggling a little bit when it comes to getting this farm against the Zyra and the Vayne, which is a little bit surprising considering how much they had these two pushed underneath their turret earlier. 
But at this point, they're the ones that are being constantly forced back. So pressure from Robloxian is pretty good. Hey, Uncle Herc, you missed it. I was showing your video earlier tonight. People were pogging out in chat. Oh, nice event. Horizon sends up the Zack. However, Arcane Vixen didn't touch the LeBlanc. And Dragon Axe with that Electrocute damage. Going to drop Arcane Vixen quite a bit. Nice hook. Nice knock up. Nice damage for Dog Shocker. He's got the level 6. But Heroes got that level 7. Something to note on Blitzcrank. He's not played very often. Is if you actually don't use the ultimate. But you let that passive slowly tick someone down. It is great harass. Because it's got some pretty good distance. And will target champions first. I believe. He's going to get a nice knock up. Flashes to the turret. The turret just going to come through. No. Heroes shield keeps him alive. Are you kidding me? Okay, I'm solo casting this one. We can go back and watch this again. I, I gotta watch this again because Doc Shocker thought he had this. I thought he had this. Nice knock up. We're gonna slow this down. Look at the hook. It gets the ultimate through as well. The turret shot comes down. How low health does Hero go before getting out? Turret flash there. Dash. Oh my goodness. 47 health. The heals off of those, I believe, minions. Oh, he had the crafting potion going as well. That might have been it, but. Ah, ah, so frustrating. I thought Doc Shocker had it for sure. That's a bit of a tilter right there. Triple mage blue team. I'm seeing in pattern here. No, they wanted to go for a full purple team. Look at their beautiful purple lineup across the board. If you have a micro center near you, that's where I'm going. Hey, yeah, micro center is great. Whoa, hold on, Vixen. Ebbs in trouble in the bottom lane. She's going to go down, followed up by God Sai with a great engage by Caboose. Burning the last of his mana for those soul shackles. Hold them in place long enough for Xeno to pick up those extra kills and now have a bounty on this Velkaz's tentacle ridden head. Is, is the tentacle's arms or is the tentacle hair? Because when you only have an eyeball, that kind of counts as a head. And if it counts as a head, tentacles might be controllable hair. Just saying, think about that when you're laying awake at night. Thousand gold lead for Team Warband, doing well at the moment. They've got some pretty good leads in that top lane. The Irelia 30 CS over the Splits Crank bottom lane. The Velkaz has a CS or a kill lead. Not a CS lead, though. And LeBlanc pops the Vigar in the mid lane. Again, this is somewhat to be expected pre-6. Vigar does have level 6 now. However, that burst from Dragon Axe just continues to shut him down. And this LeBlanc could become a problem. 74 CS to the 45 of the Vigar and two kills up. It's not looking good for Warband if they're going to let that LeBlanc just walk all over the team. So they might have to send this Kha'Zix into that mid lane to try to see if he can help this Vigar deal with the LeBlanc. The Vigar drops an event horizon. LeBlanc gets stunned. Kha'Zix goes in, gets all of his damage down. It's not that problem. Not that big of a deal. So six kills to three. At this point in the game, we're only coming up to the 10 minute mark, so there's still some time to pick off some of these plates. But really, no one besides that Aurelia in the top lane has been able to even get a single plate off of their opponent's turret. So, this is going to be a bit of a slower paced game. And to be fair, we talked about in chat or in uh, pre game is the fact that that favors the uh, side of Warband. If they have a long delayed game allowing the Vigar to build up stacks over the course of the game, he will become incredibly strong because he's just going to infinitely scale. One, hanging on this bottom side. Aurelia, a little bit of damage in that top side. Let's crank hook and a miss once more. Oh, that's so frustrating to watch. This Velka is continuing to get pressure on this bottom side. Look at the CS difference. It's still down. It's pretty much 30 CS in that bottom lane. 30 CS difference in the mid lane. 40 CS difference on the top side. Pushing 50 CS. There it goes, Aurelia. Ticking over that 50 CS differential. It's going to be a rough one. The Zack is here, though, looking for Caboose. Spell Immunity saves regard for now, but Zack will hold him in place. It's a party house bringing Zeno underneath the turret. That's going to be a Velkaz falling down. Oh, the flash from Godside to avoid the knockup. Invisible as well. Triple kill for the Vayne. Just what Robloxians needed to get back into this one. There goes LeBlanc jumping onto Arcane Vixen. The Vigar needs to drop everything. Use your ultimate, even if it's just to scare away the LeBlanc. If you drop that ult, LeBlanc hits about, you know, a fifth of her health. You're going to think twice about going all in. And she's stuck rough for those last couple of autos. Finished off the Vigar once more. Oh, and three, as well as now that three and three vein in the bottom side. 3-0 for the LeBlanc. Robloxians putting in this a nice comeback as they're going to go 1,000 gold in the lead and pick up a Windrake for themselves. 
They're going to start to have some control over this map, especially this bottom side. Velkaz didn't even have an alt opportunity to use his ultimate. A great Zack engage from Foul Jester over the wall. Setting that one up. Doc Shocker securing a minion with that hook. That's exactly what you want to see out of your Blitzcrank in the top lane. Using those spells, making sure that he gets that CS. Yeah! Yeah! That's what I like! That's what I like to see. Blitzcrank speed boost for the attack speed to take the cannon when the tower was shooting it. Just what you want. Want to check in really quick with the next Drake? It's going to be an Ocean Drake. Ooh, not nearly as exciting. Doc Shocker in the top lane, though. He's got the knockup that uses the turret. However, that next turret shot won't come through. So Hero lives for the moment. Plus, probably going to be using some of those Corrupting Potion stacks one more time to get healed up. Stay out of range of that turret killing. And Foul Jester hopping into the bottom side. Caboose drops the magic the black shield onto her, trying to avoid all the death. Goes gold for a moment. There's the Velkaz ultimate, but it's not going to be nearly enough. Zyra ultimate will lock down the Velkaz and the Vayne quick to follow as well, picking up the Velkaz. So they're able to grab, or sorry, the, the Morgana. Able to get themselves another two kills. TP from the Blitzcrank, but there's a TP from Irelia. So TP's all day long in the bottom lane as RK Vixen drops the ultimate. But Dragon Axe is still going to pick up the kill in the bottom lane. Hero making the plays. Going for God's side. We'll see what she can do. Follows to wet. Stuns up Doc Shocker for a moment. Walking away, but Vixen Ebbs is still here. Trying to hop in for the reset, but the root from the Zyra will lock down Irelia. Zack hops away with nothing to his HP bar. And the Kha'Zix, without getting that isolation damage, cannot go in for the kill. Unless the Zack sticks around too long and the Kha'Zix tries to come back out after him. He does not focusing on the minions instead. So, will be another victory for Robloxians. I really have picked up a kill. And that also allows her to finish off her Trinity Force, which could be the waning phase for Warband to actually start to come back into the game. And, uh, is this a waxing phase, actually? Because waning is going away, so... Waxing and waning. Waxing would be it. So I guess Warband is putting their wax on them cars. Getting them wheels in position to just drive over Robloxians in their way. As uh, once they've got that Trinity Force Irelia. If she can use some of that power spike in other lanes, it would be really nice. Blitzcrank looking about headed towards that mid lane. But again, the Vigar, he's 1-4 at the moment. Not exactly the most uh, incredible threat on the blue side. So uh, continuing to shut him down, not going to do that much. However, being about 40 CS down himself, it's going to take a little bit of time for Arcane Vixen to get back into the game. As uh, Ethan, I'm so sorry. You have me seeing my computer crash. No, not a problem, Ethan. Not a problem at all. We thought that might be the issue. We waited around a little bit to see if you could come back. And then we decided to go ahead and start with Foul Jester saying, you know what? We'll get Ethan into game number two if he's sticking around. No biggie whatsoever. Do not feel bad. It happens to the best of us. So, if that flash was calculated for HP region, that it was truly pro. 13 noobs on the Irelia on the top side. I mean... When you're, when you're a pro, you're a pro. What can I say? Hero making those hero plays. Ooh, Velkaz with some really good damage. I was actually impressed by that Q. I think it's uh, Atomic Dissection. Or Bisection. Excuse me. Atomic Bisection is uh, that spell made Particle Bisection. Hook. Knock up already used by Doc Shocker. He's got that Sheen now, so he's got a little bit of extra damage. Hero dashing in. Taking a turret shot. I think in this top lane, the turret might have done more damage to Irelia than Zack himself. Or sorry, than uh, Blitzcrank himself. Zack going to come in. He's going to have that slap. However, the minion wave there. Blitzcrank hook only going to land onto a minion. Ultimate from Vowel Jester is going to miss completely. Oh, that is so many spells burn on the top side that basically didn't do a thing. A nice black shield. The voice of Condemned Fry Caboose in the bottom lane. Finds the dark fighting onto the vein. The Zyra throws out that ultimate just dissuading the Morgana and Velikos from taking any more steps forward. Q gonna miss. Vixen ebbs. Playing with fire being that far up. LeBlanc going in onto the Vigar. Just too little help. And man, at this point, just go ahead and get yourself a Dark Seal Dragon Axe because you are carrying force in this game. Eight kills to 12. 2,000 gold lead. Definitely comebackable for the side of blue. And they still have that late game Vigar to count on. Hero on the top side being joined by the Kha'Zix. They dropped a lot of health off Foul Jester. However, a nice ultimate from Doc Shocker gets the silence down. So they cannot go forward anymore. And Zack goes to recall. Doc Shocker basically playing turret defense at this point. He's going to stick around. Oh, throws out the hook, but sidestep by Huan. 
So a Dock Shocker might step forward aggressively, thinking that Kha'Zix is not in that brush. All right, goes back to defense. We're past the turret phase or turret plating phase of the game, so this tur turret could be first turret to the side of Roblox. Stands in the bottom lane. Plant from the Zyra gonna get a little bit more damage, but not gonna be nearly enough to take it down just yet. No one from Warband in position to take a turret of their own, besides maybe this Zyra on the top side. And G's gonna have to not only shove Blitzcrank out of lane, but also get a ton of damage onto this turret to try to take it down before their turret on that bottom side falls. The Zyra and the Vang gonna push in now. Should secure first turret for themselves. There we go. Ooh, CC for CC. But Flash forced out by the Vigar. Or sorry, Flash forced out by the LeBlanc. It's the Vigar who flashes away. Second Drake secured by Robloxians. And looks like the Blockmen themselves, bit by bit, are picking themselves up. We got some, some plant people. We got some uh, jelly people. We got a robotic people. We got all sorts of people on the Robloxian side of things. I guess in the world of Roblox, you can actually be anything that you want to be. Quan going to find Foul Jester. Ooh, um... Okay. Uh, can I get some what question marks in the chat for that play? Um, some, some, some what question marks? Hey, Kuna! How are you doing? Welcome back! And Juna! We got a whole crowd in here. What's up? Oh! Dragon Axe gets shut down! It's the 5 death power spike. The 300 IQ play. Here we go. Arcane Vixen has been giving kills to LeBlanc this whole time. However, waited for LeBlanc to overstep. Gets the shutdown gold. Talk about the genius plays. And now they're going to try to make a play onto Zach, who's defending this mid lane turret. Hops in just to touch CC. Keeps them from getting it just yet. Waiting for that next wave to crash. They've got this bottom lane roamed up from Warband. Ooh, good flawless duet from Hero. Gonna go in, gets condemned backwards, but not stunned up. So can dash right back in. But Vane's got a massive amount of damage. Flashing away, Aurelia lives for the moment. Juan's underneath the turret. What is he doing? They're just giving kills over to Godside. And he knows he is dead. Stand still, letting Vane pick up a double kill. Six, four, and one. Great movements and fantastic tumbles by this Vane. Robloxian's definitely able to win this game with a fed Vane, a fed LeBlanc. Things are going well for themselves, and they can always rely on the Blitzcrank. If he lands a critical hook on the Velkaz or the Vigar, the game could just be over as the uh, Rift Herald going to be taken down, secured by the side of Robloxians. They can drop that, most likely in the mid lane. Doc Shocker able to just drift his way. Oh, hold on a second. He's playing the uh, car Blitzcrank versus the Drift Crew. Is that cheesy or what? That's what I'm saying. Rift Herald spawned in the mid lane. The flash from Blitzcrank! He's got the hook! Vigar goes down. Another tasty morsel for this LeBlanc. They're going to get themselves that mid lane first tier turret. They're going to move on to the second tier turret as well. LeBlanc jumping forward. The good black shield by the Morgana. She's going to start the... No, no time to start the Soul Shackles. Just had a dark binding. But Foul would just have been a great tank at this point. He's actually started off with that Bramble Vest. Interesting choice going for the against the AD. The only AD really on the side of Warband is the Irelia. So, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Well, Foul Jester going to potentially give his life over to secure. Wait, hold on. He might even get the second tier to the mid lane. The minions are there. They're beating it down. It's going to drop the minions. The minions. They're going to secure the second tier turn in the mid lane. Plus help the Zyra secure on the top side as well. Zyra and Vayne, excuse me, both securing that top lane turret. So now it's four turrets to zero. Robloxians putting that paddle to the metal. Aurelia trying to make a play onto the van on the top. Side falls to what's going to miss. Oh, is a condemned. It's not going to do that much, but Godside's got a ton of damage here. Trying to get a little bit of help on the minions. But nope, Vayne is a god at this point. Oh, they're just sitting on a ward. You don't want to be doing that. God side, 300 gold bounty, 7, 4, and 1, 137 minions, looking really, really good. Arcane Vixen, um, 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 this is a feels bad. Wait, hold on. If I had, uh, set up the, um, the, the sad flute from Titanic, I would have played that sound clip. However it goes. <laughs> That's basically what I did. Slow motion with the Titanic audio sound clip. 
That's exactly what happened there. Ooh, we gotta check in what the next Drake is. It's a Mountain Drake. Ooh, they're going for a little bit of everything, Robloxians. I believe, though, that that means that no Infernals are gonna spawn this game, which is not nearly as exciting, but they're a pretty good lead at this point. 8, 2, and 0. Oh, still no Dark Seal on this LeBlanc. I got to say, I'm in surprise by that. 8, 2, and 0. Oh, able to basically feed constantly off of the Vigar. You'd think that this LeBlanc would want to go something like that Dark Seal or Magize. Huh, considering that it goes into that. Oh, wait, hold on. The betting is still open. What? No, we can't have the betting still open. We got to close the bets. Everyone that did bet, congratulations. Getting your bets in 22 minutes into the game. Couldn't have let anyone bet on red team, despite the fact that they're a 5,000 gold lead. Too late. No more betting for you. If you catch me, though, in the future games, you can actually uh, sneak out a really solid bet. Bet everything on a team that's 10,000 gold in the lead. If I forget, Hero going to be jumped on. However, pretty tanky. Gets the follow duet on the Dark Shocker. Event Horizon not going to land. Blue side. Oh, they're doing dangerous stuff like this Morgana. It's just out of position. Great vision control by Roblox as well. On that top side, you can see these normal wards that just have vision everywhere that this Morgana is trying to go. They're engaging on Juan on the bottom side. He's got a blast cone to use. However, he's going to be bringing the Zac with him to the Zac party. Can they pop him? They got a bunch of damage. In the meantime, LeBlanc popped the Irelia on the top side. Foul will just secures himself the Kha'Zix. Can he get the healing in time as Zeno is going to be flashing away? The Vayne and the Zyra there. They have not secured the Mountain Drake for themselves just yet. They were starting that. And what a great hook by Blutzcrank. Event Horizon not going to be able to save Caboose. Dragon Axe unstoppable. Vigar finally has enough ultimate damage that he can take down Blitzcrank. Pick up that kill. But it is a small price to get. Or small, small reward for basically losing almost everyone on your team. Besides Velkaz who had to flash away. Not a good place to be in the game. Down 6,000 gold. With that Mountain Drake secured, it's going to be a lot faster to get the Baron. And they could rotate straight there. There's a lot of vision by both teams around this area. Just look at those wards deeply investing in that vision around the Baron. However, I just don't know, even with all that vision, if that's going to be enough to actually get them... Uh, get Warband in position to actually take a fight. Now, let's talk about 5v5 fights. Godsai wanted to get into game number two. I like it. We're going to make sure that people who haven't been able to play get in first, and then we'll get you in afterwards. So, team fighting from Warband. Not that great. Sure, Morgana Ultimate can hit multiple people. However, the likelihood is that she's going to die before she actually gets around to it. She has not completed her Zanyas yet. But hold on, Vixen Evs! It's the throw! Tosses out that ultimate, gets a double man knockup, and no one there to defend. That's why a squishy support should not be warding alone. You do have that Vel'Koz disintegration rate that can hit multiple people. That's a feels good. You do have the uh, Vigar, uh, which uh, Event Horizon could land onto multiple people as well. But they need to be using the CC chains, the Dark Binding from Morgana, into the Event Horizon, into the knock-up ultimate from the Vel'Koz. They need to be doing this stuff. Juan, maybe we can caught it out. Blitzcrank Hook's going to miss, but LeBlanc's got a lot of damage. They've got the slows onto Zeno. The heal used by the Vel'Koz. I don't think it's going to be enough. Trying to turn around to God's side will not be able to do so and now Morgana and Irelia both caught out in bad position Blitzcrank ultimate silences them CC for days chained up knocked up dropped down Ooh, bad days gonna be going to the maternity ward after that as Juan is gonna be heading back to the fountain trying to escape dragon axe double distortion and gets out they can turn onto the turret now they could also go for the Baron Let's go take a couple turret shots. Indecision from Robloxians. They were waiting for the minion wave to crash, but still undecided as to where they actually want to go next. They want to draw out the game by just a little bit. Mid lane, second tier, or sorry, inhibitor turret. Down to about a quarter, but defended and held by Warband. I gotta say, Foul Jester's been doing a pretty fantastic job with these engages, mostly causing disruption and annoyance, forcing out flashes from the enemy team. Even if he doesn't, you know, have kill threat, his ability to just come flying in is often one of those terrifying things you don't expect to see. Good damage out of Velkaz onto Dragon Axe in the bottom lane. Drops LeBlanc down to about half. He can find another one of those. They might be able to get a 600 gold shutdown, which would just be so good for them. Dark Shocker in position for a hook. Only going to grab a minion as a reward for his attempt. 
Vilkas was close to being caught, but I don't think he had vision, just got lucky. Step into the side of that. Foul Jester having completed that Spirit Visage could get a lot of health back. A lot of healing for this Zack. I really split pushing on the top side means it's go time to pull the trigger onto Juan jumping away. This Kha'Zix 1 and 3 has not gotten that kill edge. You want to be able to assassinate someone. However, this Kha'Zix really the only target he could potentially assassinate is this Syra. And she is doing a fantastic job of constantly walking with the vein, Making life very difficult. Good black shield from Morgana. However, the ultimate from the Zac. Gonna carry multiple people into the Zyra ultimate. Morgana and Kha'Zix are down. Arcane Vixen. Oh, almost quick to follow. But the last auto attack from Godsai, I believe, was canceled. However, she's going to be tumbling forward looking for Z. He's got the knock of the R from Arcane Vixen. Ultimate's not going to be enough. That's still going to be living for the Vein. I really goes and finally finds the shutdown onto the Vein. Disintegration Ray only touching Foul Jester just a little bit. However, Zig's still alive. Blitzcrank lands the hook. They need to find Ebon. Vixen's got a lot of damage. And, oh, hold on. Hero making the hero play. Picked up a double kill. Could turn on to the LeBlanc. She's got the Flawless Duet as well. Dragon Axe, however, is able to walk away for now. Finds the Ethereal Chain. It's going to be going in. Drops the Ignite. Sorry, Irelia, you're gonna fall. Dragon Axe going godlike through that. Good attempt. That hero play was really, really nice. And it holds the mid lane inhibitor for now. Good positioning by Velkaz. Pretty much off the screen for most of the time. Oh, good flash as well. And the chains miss from Dragon Axe. Which means Foul Jess is gonna be caught for a moment. They're hopping and he's gonna go right back in. LeBlanc is there. Blast Cone used by the Zach just to buying him a little bit of time. LeBlanc hops over the wall. And that is just the delay, delay, delay for Velkaz to be in a bad spot. She's waiting on her cooldown. She's going to go back in, take out Morgana. You can see the timing on Dragon Axe. Literally, just you're waiting on that, you know, 5, 4, 3, 2, kill. 5, 4, 3, 2, kill. Over and over and over. Good stuff. All right, the Ocean Drake has come up. It's the second Ocean Drake of the game. Should be secured by Robloxians. And it's looking like the two people who made bets for this game, number one, going to be pretty rough. We might be losing out on our bets as Red Roblox have the game around their pinky at this point. Nice. 7,000 gold lead, double Ocean Drakes. They still have not gone for the Baron yet. They want a couple more kills. They've almost doubled Warband's kills at this point, all but. And they're pinging out this top lane, second tier turret. Excuse me. The side of Warband, but one of the things they're still doing very poorly is they're not grouping. They're sent. Look at it. Zeno is all by himself underneath this turret. If there were two other people with him, he might be able to be more defended. However, you when you are that Kha'Zix running around the jungle by yourself, when you're this uh, sidestepping Morgana, ooh, Hero also DC. That is not good. It is a tournament draft game. All of these games are tournament drafts. So you're in a game and somebody DCs. You can pause the game. Just a quick slash pause. Looking like Hero has decided to quit, though. I'm not sure that was a quit or a DC. If that's a quit, that is that is not cool. We do not accept quitters. Even if the game looks dire. That is pretty bad. Pretty bad. Zach waiting for the minion wave to make his engage over the wall. They're trying to time with the Blitzcrank hook. Won't be able to do so. However, they're shoving the Arcane Vixen and Xeno off of the turret. Raw Rim, York here hanging out. Only five points of XP. You bet all five. No, the betting's already closed, my friend. You got to do that at the beginning of the game. But you'll have that for game number two. I think you actually have to have 10 XP to bet. But no, no gambling either. <laughs> I'll get you kept that one in case you lost the four, though. That's pretty cute. Inhibitor in the mid lane. Going to be in trouble. Down under half. But they're playing a 4v5 game at this point as Aurelia has quit the game or DC. Not exactly sure either way. That's going to be Morgana falling. The Valgar quick to follow afterwards as well. Godside going godlike. Taking a couple of turret shots, though. Been being a bit too aggressive. I'm um, not exactly sure what that uh, extra indicator was. Interesting. All right. Juan ignited, but not going to die yet. Dragon Axe just looking for that burst. Velkaz next up on the menu. 
The Robloxians doing their homework though. They're taking them out one inhibitor at a time. There's still a second tier on the bottom side, but I don't think they're going to be going for that. They're just looking to make sure they've got at least these two inhibitors. And now they can move in onto the Nexus turrets themselves. Robloxians in a good spot. Going to be stepping forward, looking for the Velkaz. Nope, they're just looking for the turret at the moment. A little bit of a knockup. Foul Jester being a great frontline tank this game. Dragon Axe waiting for the right opportunity to hop forward and find yet another kill. 14 and 2. So incredibly strong this game. Doc Shocker's Blitzcrank hook just barely missing. And the call is actually made by Robloxians to recall and back away. This is this is not so good. This is not so good. For the side of Warband. Thought the game might be over, put them out of their misery, but now they have to play even longer with a 4v5. This is really, really, I couldn't bet still, but feels good, man. Well, the game's not over just yet. Juan going forward aggressively. However, whoa, Dragon Axe with the Zonyas. Still hops over the wall. Should be a kill. Takes out Kha'Zix. But, uh, yeah, we saw that Zonyas. We saw that Zonyas LeBlanc. Maybe just being a little bit stylish. Definitely not a fat finger. Absolutely not a misclick. Robloxian starting up the Baron. They said, you know what? We're not worried about the bottom lane, second tier turret. It did go down. Giving us a little bit of that global gold. We're going to focus on the Baron, though. Take down that nicely armored, bit more uh, glimmery Baron. And now we can push the mid lane with super minions pouring into the four man base of Warband. Or they're just going to rotate over and pick up the next Ocean Drake, <laughs> triple Ocean Drake. That is a feels bad to play against. You're like, oh, we dropped the Zack down to a quarter health. Maybe we'll get him next time they engage. And Zack goes, I got uh, Spear Visage and Triple Oceans. Uh, sorry, what was that about being lo low health? Uh, yeah, full health. Thank you very much. I'm betting the other thing, the chance to double, or is that not a thing anymore? Uh, yeah, Gamble, I took that off because everyone was spamming it way too much. There is a heist feature that you could join, join in on, but... And be hey, Kristen1, thank you for that follow. Appreciate that. I think you played before as well. I think we have seen you on the stream before. Welcome back. Oh, hold on. Bottom lane inhibitor turret gonna fall. The inhibitor up next. They were able to drop the uh, Kha'Zix and the Vigar with a great play. N Ultimate, not gonna do that much from the Zac. This integration ray trying to take out God Sai. However, the golden stopwatch gonna be used to keep the vein alive. They've gotten themselves the Nexus and the turrets, and now they can move on to the Nexus itself. Zeno getting onto the fountain to stay alive till see the very end of the game. As, ladies and gentlemen, Robloxians will come out victorious. And those of us who bet, bet incorrectly. 13 noobs, Jason, congratulations on betting correctly this game, even though you didn't actually use the bet feature. Totally respectable nonetheless, though. Oh, give us feedback. Oh, hold on. Hold on. We've done this before. Guys, you got to help me with this. You got to We're going to just very quickly uh, switch over to this scene. And I'll just move my webcam over here. All right, check this out. Check this out. We can give some feedback. What do you guys think? The price of loot in Hextech crafting is reasonable. Do you guys strongly agree? Disagree? Neither agree nor disagree? Agree or strongly agree? What do you guys think? The price of loot in Hextech crafting is reasonable. Uh. Strongly disagree? Agree? Agree? Getting a couple different votes in the chat. Disagree? Disagree? All of the above. Oh, you got a duck. Oh, we can't do all the above. There's no option D. Well, technically there is, but, you know, we're not going to use it. Okay, so we got strongly disagree, 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 and a couple agrees. Uh, that really kind of equals out to neither agree nor disagree. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm just going to say neither agree nor disagree. Uh, how about that? That's and honestly, I think I, I that that's my feeling on it. I think there's some things that are reasonable. I think there's some things that are very unreasonable. Um, getting mastery seven is so darn difficult on certain champions. Not all champions, but certain champions. Getting mastery seven is incredibly hard. Um, however, certain champions getting mastery seven is not that hard. If you're playing a strong champion that can solo carry a game, you're gonna get stupidly fed like LeBlanc did 17 and two this game. 
your chance of getting Mastery 7 on that champion enough times to, or um, getting S's and S pluses to get Mastery 7 on that champion, not going to be that unreasonable. However, getting a S to an S plus on a champion like, I don't know, I'd almost even consider saying Zyra. I mean, she's a short-ish range champion that doesn't deal insane amounts of damage. Uh, can somewhat support, but doesn't have any innate heals for a... Like, Soraka? Oh, you just sit back, you never die, you constantly heal everyone. That's how you get uh, S's on Soraka. It's not stupidly difficult. It's a little difficult, but not stupidly difficult. Zyra's one of those weird champions. She's kind of in between. She doesn't do enough damage to pop people and instantly carry a game, like a LeBlanc. But she also doesn't heal people or give them shields like a Braum, even. Uh, or a Soraka. Or a Lulu. So, I don't know. I don't know. I say it's, it's kind of in between. All right. Yeah, Jin. Hold on, though. A friend of mine did get uh, Jin <laughs> uh, Mastery 7 pretty quickly. So, we got to go through these these players, calling out Honor Munch's MVPs, and then jumping in to game number two. We don't want to take all night long. We got some more games to get underway. We got some people that want to get in play these games, and we do not want to leave them out to dry. So, for the side of whoop. There we go. I got a couple of extra LOs in here for the set of the Roblox teams. They won. So we're going to start with Warband, the side that had their uh, Irelia potentially leave the game. Does anyone on that team, really quick, on anyone on Warband, do they know whether or not the Irelia actually left or DC'd? Because there's a big difference between those two. Either way, we're going to actually just set them to this side. They were the best person on their team, to be completely honest. But... Uh, we're going to give honorable mention over to, hmm, hmm, see, it's hard to do this without Irelia, he said he was lagging, you think it was a DC, okay, if it was a DC, then we'll give, we'll give some honorable mentions and MVPs, including the Irelia, so, alright, if that's the case, then we'll give honorable mention over to Zeno, um, uh, on the Velkaz, doing a really good job, um, one, staying alive, which on Velkaz can be very difficult, especially with the super mobility of LeBlanc, the hooks by the Blitzcrank, even the ultimates from the Zac. Uh, positioning is absolutely crucial, and uh, Zeno stayed alive more than anyone else on his team, but also got a bunch of kills, 10 kill participation, that's pretty amazing. But I'm going to give the MVP, even though it was a little bit trolly because they're playing against the Blitzcrank, um, gonna give MVP over to Hero in that top, or, uh, did I say MVP? Yeah, MVP. Over to Hero on the top side, despite the DC. If it's not a DC, then wipe the slate clean, we're starting over. But if it's a DC, we're gonna give Hero the MVP for holding that top lane for an incredibly long time, winning it basically against Dr. Shocker, then trying to TP to other lanes, got some extra kills, trying to relieve pressure in those lanes as well but just could not carry the game. Being a melee champion into all the range from Robloxians and a vein that was crushing it was very, very difficult to do. So uh, good stuff, even though Hero in the end uh, did DC. So for the side of Robloxians, honorable mention, gonna go over to God Sai for a disgusting, disgusting show of force. Um, this is a tough one though, and here's the reason why. Vixen Ebbs had some really good positioning for some really good roots, and Foul Jester, what a monster on those assists. So incredibly good. However, the reason why it's only a shout-out to Foul Jester, an actual honorable mention to Godsai, is because Godsai went to the top lane and was solo pushing and still won out in a couple of solo fights. So, Godsai, fantastic job being able to really hold your own. And then the MVP going over to Dragon Axe for an incredible showing on the LeBlanc. Shown in really good Nidalee, now showing a really good LeBlanc. Guys, we're going to have to start watching out for Dragon Axe. They're a really good player. Really good player. 17-2-2, um, two and two, decimated the mid lane, and really good timing. Uh, mostly, I remember, the fight around... Uh, after taking away the in, uh, mid lane inhibitor, when they're backing away, the pairing with Foul Jester to tank for as long as he did, which gave LeBlanc about three different times to get those spell rotations, to get a bunch of extra kills as people were trying to get the Zac, but then also back away and just didn't know where to go, didn't have the vision, rough stuff. Blobby boy, blobby boy, blobbists, blobbists. Um, 
No, I gave the shout out to you, Fellow Jester, for your engages. Good stuff. I like your build as well. I'm not exactly sure about the Thorn Mail, especially into literally, um, Aurelia did some AD damage outside of that. I mean, okay, yes, technically Kha'Zix did, but he really wasn't viable that game. And it even started building tankiness. That's not what you want to do on a Kha'Zix when you, you want to be ahead. You want to be murdering people. So Thorn Mail didn't really come into that effect. All right, we're going to take a quick break and be right back with game number two. Don't go anywhere. And if you're hanging out and want to play in these games, make sure you hit that exclamation point join to get into the games as well as your in-game name. We'll be right back. 